Meet Brian Romero. He's the world's worst <laughs> wonder kid in <laughs> FC24. And today, I'm going to take him right to the very top. But he will go right to the very top. Right to the very top. In attempt to do what Haaland and Mbappe can't and win a Ballon d'Or. Yeah, that golden ball that everyone loves complaining about and debating its legitimacy because it's just a glorified popularity contest. Nevertheless, we're controlling the young American's entire career until he reaches that point. We're going to get the teenager up there in the GOAT debate with the man who just loves producing footballing miracles, Claudio Ranieri. And let me tell you, that's what we're going to need here because we're starting damn right in the trenches. With this kid comfortably being the worst player on the roster, starting with a 48 overall, and at the current time of recording, 73 potential. He's an underground talent that is slowly making waves with Charlotte in the MLS. He's been at the club since 2022, but we have got a lot of work to do. He's a 5 foot 7 right mid slash right winger still 16 years of age so time is well and truly on his side with two star skill moves three star weak foot medium medium work rates and his best stat being 81 balance by far the most overpowering attribute because everything else is either in the reds or just extremely poor in general with a total market value of 120k he's getting paid 425 pounds a week to be honest i don't really know what a 16 year old me would be doing with that kind of money because our homegrown boy romero is the president and the future. We've got to get him stuck in straight with these development plans. Every single category is in desperate need for some upgrades. So we're just going to start him off with the wide playmaker. Working on a couple of different areas. Some important stats for a winger like vision, crossing, attack, positioning, and of course, those five-star skills. We're in it for the long haul. This is probably most likely going to take upwards of 10 seasons. We're in the early days of this lad's career and the only way is up if he wants to get in that Ballon d'Or contention realm. But we're going to have to play our cards right. He's out here just T-posing, so you already know he's destined for greatness. Thanks to some helpful PC mods that I've installed, I can literally edit intricate parts of his player. Like, he's not a creative player whatsoever, but we have the fully unlocked player editor. This guy was born in 2006, bro. Oh my god. Like, if I really wanted to, I could make him an 8 foot 4 giant. For experimental purposes, but obviously we're not gonna do that. We're gonna keep things how they are. Maybe fit him out with some new boots here and there and just enhance our customization options because we're going to be with him for some time. And if you're along for the ride and keen for the journey towards his first Ballon d'Or, make sure to drop a like on the video, hit subscribe, turn on the notifications as we've got plenty more FC24 content, football manager stuff even on the way on the lead up to the new year and 2024. Ah oh man, I just wish this tattoo section worked though. I'd be fitting him out with all sorts of ink. Nevertheless, enough yapping. Let's get the show on the road and kick off season one. Season one is all but over and we can finally document the first inklings, the first signs of progress as our man Brian, he is still the worst player on the roster despite his plus five overall upgrade, now standing at a 53 rating. His overall boost has managed to get him into the 50s and he stats this season. That is actually quite surprising. He actually scored four goals in the MLS, one assist in a preseason friendly and had an average match rating of 6.20, just turned 17 and that wide play make a development plan. All that training got him those five-star skills. Next up, we're going to go five-star, five-star, weak foot with the inverted wide midfielder training just to get all of his attribute categories above 50. And hopefully he can push and knock on the door of the 60s range. He's in good form. Now with a market valuation of 220 case, price tag has increased 83%. 600 pounds a week instead of 425. I'm feeling generous. Not that it really matters, but of course he remained trophyless with this team. Knocked out of the round of 16 in the US Open Cup and finished 10th in the MLS. Still early days for the young Americans, so we're going to let him cook in his sophomore year, remaining at Charlotte under Ranieri's guidance. I'm telling you now, Brian's not going to be the worst wonder kid for much longer. Now, it might not be the Ballon d'Or, what we're really focusing on in this video, but it's the start of something. Brian's first taste of real success, and it's come with Charlotte in the MLS. They've won the league. And even better, just to put the icing on the cake, he's been nominated for the November League Player of the Month award. Now, what exactly was him and his team able to cook up in season two? Fourth overall in the MLS and ended up winning the whole thing against LAFC in the final 5-1. I 
And a dream run to the final was knocked out early though in the US Open Cup 2-0 in round two. But alas, our very own BR38, he's still the one and only right winger at the club. So he's been working overtime. No longer the worst player on the roster and has earned himself a juicy plus seven upgrade. Rising his overall status to 61, turned 18. He successfully hit this season's target, although he's still unhappy with his own performance and the team performance. Ryan is setting the bar high. That's what you need from a future Ballon d'Or winner. And in 38 appearances, he scored himself 10 goals and 8 assists for the first time in his career in those double digits for goals. 18 goal contributions in total. Didn't get injured or suspended throughout the entire campaign. With an average match rating of 6.77, Romero said, second season syndrome who? Thanks to all that training on and off the field, he now has 5 star skills, 5 star weak foot, a couple more attributes entering the greens like sprint speed at 79, 72 dribbling and 71 shot power. He's in good form and his financial value has risen up 182% now standing with a 650k price tag. Now already in the off season the lads improved a plus one now at a 62 still the captain of the club and I'm happy to keep him at home base here for season three. The local lad who's still cooking at his hometown he's not happy with his contract so we might have to give him a little bit of a pay rise 5.7k. We have to focus on that attack work rate and improving that acceleration to match the sprint speed. There's no rush, he's still 18, got plenty of time left and I will definitely be exploring options to convert him into attacking right winger and other general attacking positions because we all know it's the same as every other career mode that you need to be an attacker to be even considered for the Ballon d'Or. I don't make the rules, I just follow them. We all know the end goal but for now we're still letting the boy improve his game and work on himself here in the MLS. We are currently deploying the wing play tactical vision to get the best out of Romero's game and we've stacked our coaches for the attack and midfield sections both nearly 30 stars in each department so that is helping our boys growth and development tremendously again I'm stating the obvious here it's not that shiny golden ballon d'or but it's the start of something special Romero's picked up his first individual award of his career that's the October player of the month award for the MLS they were able to go back to back defending their crown with a 4-2 win over St. Louis in the MLS Cup Final. However, the US Open Cup went begging with a 2-1 elimination to Messi's into Miami in round two. But Brian doesn't care because it's another season in the books. He is now showing great potential, doing one better than last season with a plus eight overall upgrade. He's hit that glorious 69 overall. Nice. He's in excellent form and his loving life could potentially be outgrowing the MLS with 38 appearances again, 12 goals and three assists, so 15 goal contributions this time around. Still with consistent numbers and an average match rating of 6.91. He's hit double figures in terms of goals again. You can kind of start to tell he's more of a goal scoring winger. So converting him into a fully fledged right winger should be on the cards. As we have some more light green attributes to boast about like stamina, vision, acceleration, short passing, ball control and crossing seem to be on the rise. And his market value has just skyrocketed. It's entered a new stratosphere. I don't know if that's 300% or 800%. But the American... American's price tag now stands at 2.8 million. I'm more than happy, especially at the start of season four now, to test the waters. Nearly climbing himself up into the best players on the roster, but let's just add him to the transfer list and see what kind of offers he attracts. I'm finally gonna bite the bullet this season, depending where he ends up. He will be training to become a right winger and it's gonna take 10 weeks. Thanks to our excellent staff, cuts it down from 22, so it just speeds up the process a little bit. Ooh, first transfer offer has come through and it's from Young boys in the Swiss League. 4.1 million pounds would be an interesting move. However, I am going to wait it out and see if any more compelling offers come our way. I don't want to just be out here getting trigger happy. Oh, Cody's decided to join us today. Cody, Cody, say hi. Say hi, Cody. Good boy. Now, post that young boys bid, we've had Chalaroy, Lanus from Argentina, and now finally, the one offer I'm willing to go through with, it's San Etienne. A club that has struggled in recent years, and you know, they could well and truly either be in the first or second tier in France. There we go, he's leaving his hometown club where he was developed in the youth academy. He's gotten too big for the club, he's got to move on now and make his mark in the big leagues. But 
And yet he waves him farewell for now as the French outfit purchased him for 3.25 million. Is he going to win a Ballon d'Or at Saint Etienne? Probably not, but it's a nice little stepping stone that was much needed for his career. But we're arriving here halfway through the Ligue 1 campaign in January. Right now, they're actually struggling quite a bit. Digging deep into the relegation zone, 14 points, 5 off bottom. Look, the American Wonder Kid, he might have to bow them out and trigger a great escape as they've just signed him and they have a heck load of right mid competition. After they purchased him, he is now down in the reserves, but we're here to change that. Don't worry, this situation is somewhat salvageable. I want to make the transition from America to France as easy as possible as we are going to just successfully convert him into a right winger. It's going to take a little bit of time. We're going to build that youth staff back up because none of them carried over from Charlotte to San Etienne. We've completely got to start again. I'm not sure exactly how much this successful position conversion is going to change things in terms of overall, but we're just going to do it anyway and see if he gets an upgrade and he doesn't. It was very anticlimactic, but we're going to place him on that wide playmaker development plan just to see if he can up his assist game. Thanks to all our new training staff and coaches behind the scenes, our boy has been able to resurrect this club's campaign halfway through, saving them from relegation. With a 14th place finish, they have risen up the ranks since his arrival. After just half a season, he's well and truly slid his way into the first team. He's in bad form right now and he's hit 20 years of age, a plus two, now entering the 70s range. And with 16 appearances, he's made the most of it. Three goals and five assists, selling up to eight goal contributions and averaging a 7.16 match rating. He's shown that he can do both. He can juggle both the goals and assists. And that wide playmaker training is really elevating his game. Now with balance and sprint speed, the first attributes to hit the 80s, 71 acceleration, agility, 78 attack positioning, now five star, five star, high attacking work rate. He is geared up, ready to go for his first full season in France. Now with a market valuation of 3.8 million, it's risen 35% in half a year. Once his acceleration matches up to his sprint speed, we're going to swap it over to the inverted winger. But for now, we're keeping things as it is. You never know, the quote-unquote Farmers League could be the perfect place for him to show off his talents and really make a name for himself in Europe. I know Romero's still got a long way to go, but I'm just curious to see who's winning the Ballon d'Or in 2026. I skipped past the nominees and it's Mbappe. He, he took what I said at the start of the video seriously. He's taking it to heart and him alongside Haaland are probably going to be impossible to beat. However, winning the Young Player of the Year award might be a start for Romero. Like, kick that goal off the list and then we can focus on the golden ball. Now, the season is still left in the balance. We have a historical moment we're about to witness here because our boy has somehow finessed his way into a major final. It is the Coupe de Nationale, a big cup final. San Etienne taking on the Giants PSG. They've got a Ballon d'Or winner in their ranks. We hopefully have a future upcoming Ballon d'Or winner in ours. And it's all going to go down at the Parc de Prince. Were they able to pick up a miracle? No, but it was Romero who managed to score an equalizer in the 47th minute. The American read his name into the history books. The 2026 Golden Ball winner Mbappe missed a pen. 2-1. Such heartbreak. Not today, Brian. He couldn't add another piece of silverware into his cabinet. But what he has been able to achieve this season is to keep San Etienne in the top flight. With 36 points, they are now steadily and stable. It has been a season where they've standed on business. I wanted to take the captain's armband off him because I just don't think he's ready yet. However, the numbers and production he was able to cook up, he's up there in the charts with 14 goals and 14 assists, perfectly balanced, 28 goal contributions in only one and a half seasons here in Ligue 1. France has now become his training ground and look at him up front with Matteo Joseph. 17 goals from the English striker and I'm sure they have formed a deadly little duo, a partnership that could go down in the history books. Look at them two up front. He's linking up with a guy that low-key looks like a young Jaden Sancho. Look, I'm happy for them in every regard. The chemistry is sky high and in 39 appearances, again, has provided a 7.24 average match rating, a career high and a plus five overall growth with the wide playmaker development plan. He's still got room to grow. He's still got time. And in season six, we are focusing in on the shooting category, working those attributes up into the greens and that's going to really mold him into a proper goal scoring threat. Now valued at 14.5 million pounds, who knows? A few big European clubs may come knocking. Let's just play the field and play the market this summer and see how they react to those kind of performances. Who knows what the rest of 2027 will bring, but all I'm sure of is that there are better things to come. Now to make the situation even sweeter, in season seven, he's the seventh 
seventh best player on the roster and now has had a potential status upgrade from showing great potential now standing as an exciting prospect. At number 38, he's doing smart good things and over the off season already with this inverted winger development plan training, he's improved the plus one. It didn't take long for some offers to come through the, to the table and okay, we've got a move inside of France here so it wouldn't be too much of a scenery change as Lille have actually bid it under his value, 19.4 million pounds. What in God's name do we have here? Rayo Vallecano for 6.3 million, including Yannick Carrasco in a swap deal. That's low-key not a bad move for the club, but for Brian Romero, I just don't see a future there. He needs somewhere he, where he can build and be part of a project, somewhere that focuses on youth development and Olympic Leon, they might just be what we're looking for. He's making the move quite late in this summer transfer window, so he's already managed to play two league games, got himself a goal and an assist on his farewell tour, and the deal is done, the deed is done, and he's put pen to paper, and the club have really believed in him, already given him the number 10 jersey. The American now making the switch to French Giants. I know they're struggling in real life, but in career mode, they are a gun team. It's official, there we have it. The wheels are turning now, there we go. One Italian in, one Italian out. Grosso out, Ranieri in. Now, let's not take the piss here. It's a similar situation, the system, the formation, it's kind of all familiar. Nevertheless, our future Ballon d'Or winner takes priority. As this is the brand new and improved starting 11 Romero will be slotting into with that front attack and trident of Colombo Pellistri. And you know I just had to bring him along for the vibes, the storyline. It's our mate Matteo Joseph. He's joining his best mate Romero at Lyon and this epic partnership will continue. This is how the training situation is going down, inverted winger to the moon. And just to put that icing on top of the cake, give our boy a little gift and reward him for all the hard work and his big moves he's been pulling off. I've added four play styles to his locker, including Rapid, Flare, Trickster, and Relentless. He's just that little American energizer buddy, ready to take over the world, and has all the tools at his disposal, ready to make it big at Leon. Here in 2027, we get a little bit of a sneak peek into our boys' nominees and competition. Sacco's won the Prem, Liao, Mbappe, Vinicius Jr., no Harlem though. These lads might be dominating the 2020s, but Romero's looking long term. What about Young Player of the Year? Let's see. No, he wasn't up for that either. Thiago Brito, a random youth regen. And the Ballon d'Or winner goes to Vinicius Jr. Real Madrid won the Champions League, so it speaks for itself. He's just out here smashing milestones because he's actually been called up from the US men's national team. It's taken them about six seasons to realize. From now on, he's definitely in the national team setup and looking for that 2030 World Cup glory. Romero is now venturing into a different echelon of the table in Liga, now in the top half. Qualified in six with 57 points as PSG tie Stad Rene, but still end up winning the league. And over in the cup, he couldn't make another final this time, losing out to Le Harve 2-1 in the quarters. Coming through second in Group A, they eventually made it out into the round of 16, where they were eliminated to Lazio 3 to an ag. No silverware to boast about, but what kind of stats was he able to pull up this season? He was actually the top goal scorer at the club, believe it or not. With another consistent, lovely little plus five to his overall, he's now entered the 80s range. He has that special something. He's in excellent form and has nearly doubled his initial starting overall. He's seen a whopping 36 overall point upgrade in seven seasons and as an important first team player, scoring double figures in both departments, just like he did at Saint Etienne with 16 goals and 21 assists. Just keeps upping the ante every single season. These campaigns just get better and better. Who knew an American and an Englishman could get on so well as his mate Matteo Joseph found his footing five goals off the bench, but it's still 37 goal contributions in 46 appearances. I'm still trying to wrap my head around. Plus those four play styles we gifted him with. I think it's just added an extra element to his game and Leon's number 10 is coming through hot. He's cooking up in the kitchen. No maxed out attributes yet. He can score, he can assist and his market value reflects that. Earning himself a 41.5 million pound price tag. He's producing some numbers that the senior players could only dream of. And the US men's national team have recognized that now implementing him into the starting lineup. That could be a sneaky dark horse for the 2030 World Cup. We've got to steady ourselves because that's still two years away. He's just going to keep on working, put his head down and graft as he's added another trophy to his individual cabinet, winning the May Player of the Month award in League 1. And that's where we'll wrap it up for Season 7. Look, if it ain't broke, I don't usually try and fix it. But considering I was just going to leave it on inverted winger this season, I want to switch things up. He hasn't been on wide winger for a while and we need the agility stat to creep up into the 80s just to make him more of a well-rounded winger, even training him to 
to be a left winger just to add it to his repertoire. Believe me, lads, we've just got to go ahead and trust the process at this point. I'm in too deep, and that position change didn't really do much for him. Now, everyone's got to crack the code onto how to be nominated or even win the Ballon d'Or as Vinny Jr. goes back to back, reclaiming the Golden Ball. But for this Young Player of the Year award, I don't really know if you have to be under 23 at a certain overall. We haven't really figured it out as everyone who wins this award is just a random youth generated regen as he's gone from one of the worst wonder kids in the world pipped as one of the most exhilarating talents in the world and in season eight his leon could be charging towards a title run the team was a rising star and we're living the dream for a little bit but psg just took over in the title race but it was a top four finish third place for leon and qualifying them for the champions league in season nine and again losing out to psg 2-1 in the french cup final this kid just can't catch a break man remaining trophyless again however they didn't even play in Europe actually no Europa or anything like that so he just had the domestic campaign to focus on and again he's gone back to back with it it's just these consistent plus fives that he just loves catching that's boosted his rating again now standing as an 87 overall and this time he's gone back to back double figures in both departments let's face it it's not really Ballon d'Or numbers like I'm not expecting him to get a nomination based off that season however it's a good sign that he's not getting injured he is participating 39 appearances in all comps with an average match rating of 7.19. He's starting to enter into that generational talent type of conversation. He's not a one to get anymore. As what I did do was swap out his flair trait for quick step. I don't know. I just thought that would probably have suited him better. And we're going to switch up his development plan for season nine. Going into a World Cup year, I want him to be a goal scoring threat for club and country. Switching him back to inverted winger because his price tag has been jacked up 84%. Now with an 107 million pound valuation. The question is, what major European juggernaut what a piece of this American hype right now. Look, we started controlling his career at 16. You think he might have grown a little bit, maybe a couple of inches. He might not be six foot and above, but I'm going to make him from 5'7". Let's just, let's just make him, you know, 5'10". He could have put on a little bit of muscle, so I'm going to use this open customization I have at my disposal to good use. Add a little bit of a growth spurt. Better late than never. Get him a trip down to the barber shop. Give him a new hairdo. Why not? And some new drip. Come on, we've got to take advantage of all these newly unlocked boots with these mods. Our boy is going through a little bit of a facelift, but it was a much needed one. Now in season 9 for 2030, let the world domination and games begin. We've got no shortages of offers right now, but how did the likes of Nottingham Forest whip up 122 million plus Malik Thilman to trade up in a deal? That's just beyond me. Anyway, we wouldn't accept that. Sevilla came through with a bid under his value and Barcelona nearly coughed up 200 million pounds to bid on Romero, but I didn't see it in time, otherwise I probably would have accepted it. Oh. Oh, damn, this is a deal and a half on the table here, ladies and gentlemen. Bayern Munich have not only bidded 135.4 million, but thrown in a prime like-for-like -like replacement. I'm going to give that one the green light. It's time for a change of scenery, and there's no doubt that Bayern are in the Champions League. So the American will get a taste of UCL Knights. Like, come on, like, we're a club Bruges, a Belgian club, getting 141.2 million pounds from. Like, there's going to be some kind of money laundering going on here. 2029 is wild. Money just probably doesn't mean anything anymore. The business is true, the trade has gone through, and from France to Germany he goes. Brian Romero is going, he's off to the Bundesliga in probably one of the biggest swap deals of all time. A nine-figure cash deal plus the world-class Portuguese. Fingers crossed, that's the deal that's going to get him over the line and be actually recommended for a Ballon d'Or win. The now 5 foot 10, 23-year-old, he's on the precipice. You can just feel something brewing. Here. The big bucks have indeed been splashed as it is the top charting move of the summer. Now how he slides in and fits into this Bavarian puzzle in 2029. This attacking diamonds of Prime Nunez, Prime Muziala, Pino on the left. This has all the signs of a super team written all over it. Maybe besides the aging midfield. But other than that, I'm sure they can remain competitive on all fronts. And help the American towards his Ballon d'Or push. I'm surprised they only gave him a two year contract after they spent all that money on him because now the dribbling and pace are both in the 90s range we're looking to focus on that shooting and passing category as our boy has hit another milestone in his career achieving his first ever maxed out stat and that is sprint speed with a 99 you can throw dribbling in that 99 club whilst you're at it because it looks like stamina and attack positioning are up next i'm not very bullish on him being in these 2029 nominees and yeah i'm right we've got the top four kavata scalia oshiman and bape and vinnie jr is looking to do 
still a 3 P. With the trophy being awarded to Mbappe, he stopped the Vinny Jr. streak and the Young Player of the Year award is under Sanchez at Real Madrid. Now that he's an established talent, he's just got to go out and prove to the world that he's the man. Hold up, hold up, hold the phone. This could be a little bit of a precursor towards a Ballon d'Or. Is he going to win the Bundesliga Player of the Season in his first? No, it's his teammate Muziala. Oh, that one's going to sting. It got me all hyped up for nothing. Anyways, Jamal comes away with the title, which only means one thing. Not only is he in the Champions League final, in a dirt Classica, might I add. What a way to duke it out in your first Bundesliga campaign. Not only that, but winning the league champions, it's first versus third in the Bundesliga. So we'll see what goes down later on. As the Super Cup, they were able to take that one home too. And in the DFB Pokal, they were eliminated in the semi-finals to RB Leipzig. So a little mini treble was on the cards. Dortmund are trying to defend their champions. League crown as they did win the UEFA Super Cup earlier on in the season, but what a run to the final. Now, Brian's taken part in a handful of cup finals, but none come bigger than this. It's the pinnacle of club world football. The UCL final, it's a 2013 rematch, and Dortmund are looking for revenge. Look, that's a questionable starting 11. I don't really know how they've made it all this way, maybe carried by De Jong and Koble, but Romero, is he going to score in another big game, or is he going to let this opportunity go to waste? Is he going to assert his dominance and oh no way. Romero, he's grabbed the front page, grabbed the back, and written his name into the headlines with an 84th minute winner to get one over Dortmund again. Clutching up in the big game with a 2-1 win. Like the lad's a treble winner, surely. That is going to stack up to something and get him some votes for this Ballon d'Or. And ever since he made this Bayern move, it's been nothing but Ws. Now, was he able to back it up with his production? With the World Cup fast approaching, he's now at an 89, a cheeky plus two, which which is the lowest growth he's ever had in a season. But yeah, that's saying something considering where he started from and he's now written his name into history. Like every single Bayern fan is loving this guy. Romero jersey sales are at an all time high in 52 appearances. This kid just doesn't get injured. He started in pretty much every single game he could with 24 goals, 12 assists, 36 goal contributions in 52 appearances. He conquered France, conquered Germany. He's now the second American to win the Champions League. And yeah, he's just going from strength to strength, knocking on the door, that world-class ability, about to enter the 90s club. But his market value is somehow dwindling down 3%, a price tag of 132.5 million pounds, and he is just absolutely loving life at the moment. The only weakness to his game is his strength. Like, he's got to be hitting the gym. We've got to make sure he's a gym rat and starting to lift a bit of weight because, yeah, 37 strength, he's probably getting knocked off the ball heaps, and he'll be out on international duty for the USA. USA. They've qualified given the circumstances and they've been drawn into Group B, already winning their first group stage game, but against the Netherlands, Hungary and Qatar, that is definitely not a winnable group, but they should be able to get out of that. No disrespect, but yeah, it'd be nice to see him carry his nation to a World Cup final. Romero's career, it's flourishing, it's peaking just at the right time and I can't wait to see what him and the other Americans cook up on the international front. Could Brian replicate that Champions League debut energy and bring it to the World Cup? Up as he successfully got his nation out of Group B, qualifying could have been top with seven points. They progressed through to the round of 16, up against Argentina. It's a tough draw, but they went out valiantly on penalties, 4-3. All the way, let's see who won it. It was Argentina. So they ended up getting knocked out against the champions. You can't fault the USA for that. They didn't go down without a fight. Then it looks like one goal and one assist in four appearances. He played every single match. He couldn't compete with the likes of Ferreira and Balogun up top, but at least he has two world Cup international gold involvements to his name. I can't believe we're a decade deep, but we're here and the push continues. We're switching his development plan to wide playmaker. I want 99 acceleration whilst we're at it. We got to match the sprint speed and that passing category needs to enter the upper echelons of 80 plus. So there's still work to do. I can't believe I hadn't covered this earlier, but just in case you're wondering, here are all his instructions I've applied whilst he's in game just to get the best out of him. We got to run stay forward for defensive support, cut inside chance creation and get him behind support runs. He's the ultimate American winger assassin. I have some faith for the worst one to kid in world football. Ten seasons down the track, he's hit that golden 90 level. But is that enough to get him a Ballon d'Or nomination in 2030? And I can see, okay, the text is covering his face, but he's up there in the top four alongside his teammate Darwizzi. It is going to be a tough battle. And Brian Romero has the opportunity to be the first American to take home a Ballon d'Or and be crowned the best player in the world. And also, after this journey of literally being a full 
48 rated nobody. He has taken season 10 by storm. Coming back from World Cup duty to net 11 goals and 3 assists. He's the top dog here at the Allianz Arena. Uh oh. Oh no. The cutscene's not here. The award has been given, and it's... No, not that guy, not the young player of the... It's Vinny Jr. again, god dang it. What did he do that was so special? The Brazilian didn't... was nowhere to be seen in the Champions League final. Didn't win the World Cup. He must have put up some crazy numbers at Madrid. And also, this young player of the year, Hans Sanchez, won that again. But, like, what does a man have to do? Brian Romero was so close, but yet so far. I swear, who's voting for these awards, man? Vinny Jr.? Oh, he's... I mean, he's 94 rated. I can't... I can't put it past him. At least he's actually in the 90s. He's just the new Ballon d'Or demigod in career mode this year that you're gonna have to do something insane, something out of this world to pip Vinny Jr. to the crown. And heads up, Romero, you're gonna be back. I'll put the house on it that he'll be there in the top four again next year. Don't worry. Big boy Brian, man, he's taking that Ballon d'Or snub personally. We're in back-to-back -back Champions League final and it's another all-German affair, this time up against Wolfsburg in 2031. UEFA Super Cup, they beat out Spurs 4-2 to take Take that one home to launch the season in the Bundesliga they backed up their crown quite comfortably back to back German champions the American just keeps on adding silverware to his collection but losing out in the German Super Cup 1-0 to RB Leipzig and in the DFB Pokal couldn't make it to the final eliminated in the quarters to Hamburg now it's first versus eighth in the Champions League final here we are in the big dance can they go back to back European champions as Romero has proved to be a big game player before can he replicate it again and it was a dominating display 3-0. Romero not on the score sheet this time, but played a part, actually controversially, being taken off before half time. 45th minute. I don't know if he picked up an injury or something, but I do not approve of that decision by the assistant manager whatsoever. But a win's a win in my book. And to draw the curtain on yet another treble winning season. I know it's not the proper treble, but three major trophies. He's doing the USA proud. He's going above and beyond, and he's now entered the 90s properly. Only two overall points away from from Vinny Jr. with a lovely little plus three overall boost. His contract is expiring, about to enter his prime, so who knows, some clubs could throw bids around. 52 appearances yet again, 28 goals and 17 assists. This is what he does, people. It's just what he does, and he's the top goal scorer at the club, outscoring Darwizzi. Brian Romero makes sure to score his tap-ins, baby, with 45 goal contributions and a career best goal contributions, might I add, literally competing in every competition possible. There's no international football or duty to attend to, so he's got a whole off season and summer to rest up and charge again for his Ballon d'Or acquisition. He is edging ever closer to eternal not team but personal glory and his transfer market value. It's up to the sky now, 174.5 million pounds. Season 11, really, it's now or never. He won so many competitions and participated in so many cups that it doesn't even fit in the end of season recap. The Champions League isn't even there. Again, Vinny Jr. could never. If he doesn't win it this time, there is definitely a scandal, a situation Corruption is taking place in Karimo. We're giving him 310k a week, crucial first team player, three year extension, and that whopping nearly half a billion pound release clause. I know it's crazy numbers. Yeah, give him that skinhead look, match his profile photo. He, he just looks like an absolute cold blooded killer. Yeah, the box cut is back, the full cut, clean cut menace. Bro, what the? Like, these mods somehow must break the game because I changed his haircut, I gave him a little trim, hooked him up with a fresh cut for the new season. And and this is how it rewards me. Minus 36 to his overall. What the f- what is going on in this game? Have we just killed this man's career right before our very eyes? He's gone down to one star weak foot somehow, and all of his stats have just been reverted. He's just been reset back to when he was 16. We've literally just ruined 11 seasons of progress. Nah, this has got to be a joke. EA, come on. No, there's no way. He was on the precipice of winning the Ballon d'Or, and look, look how they've massacred my boy. Ah, don't you worry, boys. I'm professional with it. We got a save point. Don't worry, mate. Like, don't, we, we got things under control. And if I didn't, I would have I would have just flipped my desk. I would have thrown my controller out the window. Season 11 and we're back at it again. The nominees are here. And it's the same top four as last time. We're running it back and it's a rematch. Everyone's up for it this time. In this season, it's gone up a plus one. Six goals, eight assists in 13 games. I just, I'm really at the stage where I don't know what it's going to take to beat Vinny Jr. At least he can boast about his 200 million pound plus valuation. That is, that is actually insane. Literally, man, I swear down, I 
I will send that Brazilian punk back to the Brazilian favelas where he came from. But the, okay, the cutscene is triggered. The cutscene is triggered. Have we done it? And Brian Romero, it's David Beckham to read it out. And he has gone from the worst wonder kid in the world. 48 overall at Charlotte FC in the MLS. The American has climbed his way up the footballing ranks, conquering every facet of the game. And now individually, even though Izzy has to sit back and applaud his greatness. Because the kid has transformed his life, his career, his legacy. And it is possible, thanks to dynamic potential, to get some of the worst wonder kids and hidden gems in the game to get their hands on that golden ball. And in 2031, it's taken us 11 years of grind to get here, but we've done it. What a beautiful sight to behold. I'm just soaking it in. I'm just taking in the moment. Because, man, this has taken me ages to record. Our American star boy is one of the world's best. He is him, people. We stand it on business, and he is one of the world's best. He's got a Ballon d'Or to prove it. And we can finally rest on a grateful universe. What a story. What a run it's been. Let's give him one final proper send-off and see what he can do at the end of this season. Wrap it up beautifully, tie it in a nice, neat little bow, and have a final recap to what has been a great 12 years. Where was Harlan, by the way? He was just non-existent. I don't know what he's up to, but he wasn't even in the top four whatsoever. Darwin Nunes as outperforming Harlan. That is crazy. Last year, we did it with this guy, Gideon Tete, and he still somehow is at Shamrock Rovers after all these years. Oh, my days. Four, three Champions League finals in a row. And this time it's up against his Ballon d'Or arch nemesis, Vinny Jr. Winning the Bund... Oh, no, they came sixth in the Bundesliga. That was a hectic title race. Six-horse title race. I'm not even mad that they lost the Bundesliga because that is the closest I've ever seen it in all these years. What the hell has just gone down? Season 11, I don't know. They might be slacking because in the German Super Cup, 1-0 win versus Hamburg. And then DFB Pokal, they literally haven't been able to win that so far. And in the Super Cup, a 5 0 thrashing of PSG. They are loving these Super Cup wins, and what a run. To be up against the Galacticos in the final, can they do the three P? Let's give our Ballon d'Or Starlet a run and see how he feels and how he actually plays in game. Ooh, 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 oh, look at him go. Look at him go. Come on. Let's add something to your highlight, real king. Oh, that's not going to make it. Here we go. Musiala can find it perfectly. And Real Madrid pushed heaps of defenders upfield. And it's opened up for Darwin Nunes to slot home the equaliser. What an assist from our boy. Darwin, is he? He did the unselfish thing. Could have gone for goal. But you know what? He's a team player. Going to cut that one back. Keep it in play. And a lovely little cross to Dole, is he? How has he saved that? Could have been another beautiful assist for the man. As Muziala can see him ball over the top, settle the goat debate. And Diogo Costa can Brian get onto this. He's tried the bicycle kick. Oh, here we go. Real Madrid have put on Vinny Jr. 62nd minute. And their Ballon d'Or boy. And it's really going to be the Romero versus Vinny Jr. show now. And Romero now in the clear. He's got a man in the middle, but he wants to cut back and score a goal in the final. And it might ricochet to him, but he couldn't react in time. And Jeremy back inside. We've got Musiala to set up our boy Romero and he settled the debate. Who's the best winger in the world? This guy is. Not only that, the best player and he's a big game player. How many goals has he scored in big cup finals now? This guy is just an immense talent and he cannot be stopped. He's entered his villain arc. Vinicius Jr. come outside. I just want to talk. Brian, my son. I feel like a proud father watching on. He's not going to Champions League. Brian, he can go ahead and make it a third down. Cheeky rainbow flick. And the deflection nearly got to Nunes. And the battle, the showdown, has been won by our American. The here are his final numbers. Here are the final stats and attributes. One of the world's best. The plus two this season. Now at 26 and 20 goals, 21 assists. He is just an absolute monster with 41 goal contributions. Like it's just another day. Like it's just another season. From the mid 40s to the mid 90s. From 16 to a grown man. To be honest, we got to give credit where it's due. The main mastermind behind all this. Claudio Ranieri has been with us. Conquering the world. It's been a grind. It's been a struggle. But it's been one of my favorite videos to record hands down. If you've made it this far, drop the video a like down below. Hit subscribe if you want more of these challenges to see what I can pull off in career mode. Who can I win the Ballon d'Or with next? Maybe the worst player on FIFA. Maybe the oldest player on FIFA. Who knows? My PC's fixed. I think, fingers crossed, the content will be flowing on the BCHD channel. So make sure to lock in. I'm back, baby. And Brian Romero, he's an absolute stud. He's the GOAT. As always, I thank you guys very much for watching. Have a great day. And I'll catch you all in the very next video. Bye-bye.